Good morning, everyone. I haven't done this style video in quite some time. I'm gonna be doing a one brand first impressions, a full face of makeup from Majolica Majorica. I've been on like an old YouTube binge lately. I was watching like Zoella and Sprinkle of Glitter. It made me think I wanna do some videos I haven't done in a while. And also, I'm going to Japan in a couple weeks, which I'm super excited about. But without much further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Hello! Okay, really quickly, I have an important announcement to make. Now, as you guys may or may not know, I have been supporting an organization called Saving Innocence for quite some time now. And basically, Saving Innocence is an organization that helps victims of child sex trafficking, and they advocate for them, they provide support, and they get children and victims of sex trafficking out of those environments. So, unfortunately, the Sad truth is that sex trafficking is something that still runs rampant in our society. It could be happening in your neighborhood, in your city. So organizations like this and supporting them is really, really important. Now, while I've raised money for them in the past, by the way, if you wanna donate, I'll put the link down below. I have always gotten asked by you guys, I don't have a ton of money, how can I help? Well, now is your opportunity to help. Saving Innocence is right now in a competition to win $75,000 and all you have to do is go vote. I will put a link down in the description box below as well as like B-roll to show you how easy it is. It would literally take 10 seconds of your time and the difference it would make if this organization wins this money would be incredible. This organization does amazing work and I really, really want them to win. So if you guys could vote, if you could share it, if you could go on their social media follow their Facebook Instagram anything like that support like that is really helpful getting the word out so I just want to put that in here really quickly so please go vote we need saving innocence to win this money <laughs> I should really lay this out. I was slowly collecting this. I'll link down below where I pick up the products. One thing I've noticed about Japanese makeup is that a lot of it's like very wrapped. Plastic wrapped and then plastic wrapped inside. So I don't know what that's about, but you guys know, let me know. The first product I'm gonna be using is eyebrow product. I'm gonna have such a hard time with names. This is the Brow Customized Sword Cut. I got the shade BR782. I totally guessed in the dark with this. Just as a heads up, this is something else I've learned with Japanese beauty. Um, a lot of times you'll get the cartridges and then the actual holder separately. So be sure to actually pick up the cartridge of the product you want to try and not just the outside. I feel like I'm doing, like playing Legos with my makeup, trying to put all this stuff together. Is there no lid? Wait a minute. Was I supposed to buy the lid separately too? Do I just retract it to close? Is it? Okay. The point of this, haha. The point of this and the point of this is to be slanted, so it's a sword cut type of eyebrow product that's supposed to be good for application. This is almost like a very light brown almost. I could have probably gone for a darker shade, but honestly, I would rather have my eyebrows be a little too light than too dark. Show you guys the difference between my eyebrows. This one's filled in, this one's not. Makes my eyebrow look a little lighter. It's a little too hard for my liking. If you're the type of person who likes the hard pencils, you probably like this. What's next? I got a couple different eyeshadow products. I got a quad, which is in BR799. Majo look. I love that. How pretty is that packaging? I did pick up neutral shades in that because I picked up this guy here. I find it so weird that they package it in plastic and package it in plastic again. Maybe that's to keep it like super secure, I don't know. So this is basically a single shadow. You can essentially depot this and put it into another palette. I just picked up a bright color because I actually wanted to see how pigmented a bright color was. We all know that they do a really good job of their neutral shades. I've talked about some Japanese eyeshadow quads in the past. The design on like that shadow there embossed in it is so pretty. First, I'm gonna take this color and just put that on my lid. That's actually not bad considering I did not put primer on. The gray one, I'm gonna put on my crease and then I'm gonna go ahead ahead and deepen it with this dark color here. And then a little bit of this white on my inner tear duct. Oh, the white's a cream. Lastly, I'm gonna take that purple color and I'm gonna go ahead and put this along my lower lash line. I'm impressed, it's pretty pigmented. I forgot eyeliner. The next order of business is mascara, the Lash Esthetician. I was very picky when it came to mascaras because with Japanese mascaras, typically a lot of them are fiber mascaras and fiber mascaras always irritate my eyes. Packaging is kind of cool. No, it definitely has fiber on it. Well, I guess my eyes will just have to take a little bit of a beating today. 
actually looks pretty. It actually, it's very pretty like lengthening mascara. Oops, it got tangly. <laughs> this might not be the best layering mascaras. Typically fiber mascaras are not the best layering mascaras because once you lay the fiber down and let it set, it should pretty much stay there. So the next product I have is the face product. This is the Skin Lingerie Pore Cover. Has an SPF of 20 and a PA plus. I don't know if this is foundation or BB cream. I think it's BB cream. Oh no, that looks yellow. <laughs> Definitely not my color. Maybe I'll have to use this more of a base. I do have powder here, so hopefully that'll give me more coverage. I'm gonna put a little bit more on. It's like yellow, it's kind of weird. Pretty thick. So this side has it on. This side doesn't. I can see how it kind of softens the appearance of the skin a little bit. Feels pretty like velvet kind of feel on the skin. Even though I'm a girl who likes her coverage, I can appreciate when a foundation is just pretty and natural looking. This is just not doing it for me. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the other side. Definitely looking a little ghostly. Probably will pass on this. I don't know if I'm gonna honestly find a lot of Japanese face makeup. I'm gonna enjoy because like I said, I am a bit more on the tan side and I know with Asian cosmetics, sometimes that can be a little bit difficult to find. So here we have the... The packaging is absolutely gorgeous. Is this translucent? Oh no, what's going on? This has got to stick in there, right? Yes, okay. That just must have shaken out during transit. I think I got a translucent one. Darn it, I was hoping this was gonna help me add some color back into my skin. I don't even know what color I got. Did I use the puff that came with it? I feel like I'm just asking for trouble if I do that. Also, like that it has the M in there. Can't even see, cause too translucent. Not bad, looks nice, it's just, you guys, I'm not matching my skin. What did I do? I don't know if I just purchased the wrong shades or if they just don't come in my shades. I don't know. Even my eyebrows are the wrong color. You just have to say that you're fine. This side is set, this side hasn't been set. So you can kind of see a slight difference. Like definitely looks more matte and powdery. I'm just like literally making this situation going on worse. It's me, the ghost, Casper. The friendly ghost, the friendly ghost. I like the packaging, so maybe I can just go find the cartridge for this when I'm in Japan and I'll have to rebuy the whole compact itself and get the right shade. What's next? So I have these. Aren't these cute? I think both of these are cheek colors. I've got peach macaroon and cafe macaroon. This is a shading powder. This is the Form Remaker. I can't read cursive that well. And then we have the Puff to Cheek in PK301. So let's go with the shader first. I like this tin makeup. It's kind of fun. Oh, it's so cute. These remind me of like the little Etude House lovely cookie blushers. I was a little concerned. I thought it was gonna be very orange. It's more kind of yellowy toned. Go ahead and see what it looks like on my skin. Hopefully this will bring a little color back into my skin. This is not showing up on my skin at all. When you're not really fine, but you- This is like magic powder, it just disappears. I can see it fluffing up. Really weird, it's like not adhering. I see like a teeny tiny bit here. I could honestly probably set my foundation with this and that might have been better. Let's go ahead and try. See, I've, I picked up a ton of product. Kind of see it, but it's just very subtle. Shading and contouring is probably not that popular in Japan. Ooh. Why does that look so light compared to the powder in the tin? Maybe I'll have better luck with the blush. It's so cute. Disappearing blush. It's weird because I can see it like floofing off my brush, but it's like not sticking to my skin. Again, I get like Japanese beauty trends more light on the side of natural, but I have better luck with Korean blushes. Like even if I have like a light colored blush with Korean beauty, I can still like pick up enough product and get it to show up. Last but not least, we have a lip product. And I'm pretty sure this was a Cosma award winning lip product. This is the Pure Pure Kiss Neo in the shade RG312. It's so tiny. It's like a little mini lipstick. I love the packaging too. Okay. I don't know, it just looks like it's not going on very evenly. It actually might not be a bad blush color. Did not go on very smoothly. I actually, I think it's the powder. Like I think it's everything that's going on top of the powder just is not sticking to my skin. Almost like the powder is too mattifying. Like it won't allow products to stick on top. Oof. 
that did not blend well. Here's an Etude House lipstick and here's the Majolica Majorica lipstick. Wow, you get like barely any product. Now to do a really quick recap on the products themselves, I would say the products I would look into purchasing, definitely the eyeshadow products, I thought those were impressive. And the eyebrow product, I think I would definitely like to try a little bit of a darker eyebrow shade if they have it. Other than that, I think that just like the face makeup, they were a little bit too light on my skin. It just didn't work with my skin type. I might actually look and see if they have darker shades of these, because maybe I just picked up light shades of the blush. But the powder, it just is not designed for my skin type. I have a dry skin type, so I think it was just too mattifying on my skin. Also, the foundation or BB cream, <laughs> Whatever this is, was to light on my skin as well. I like coverage, I like a little bit of like a nice glow. And the lipstick itself is pretty tiny and I don't love how it goes on my lips. It definitely kind of sinks into the cracks on my lips and feels like it's gonna move around a lot. And the mascara, I am just not a big fiber mascara person. I can actually feel my eyes getting irritated now, so I'll probably take this off after this video. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one brand. First impressions, full face of makeup. And let me know if you guys have any recommendations from Majolica Majorica that you guys would recommend I check out when I go to Japan, or any shades in particular that you think would work well for my skin type or my skin tone. I will leave links down in the description box below for all of the products, including a discount code if you want to check that out. And as always, I hope you guys are happy and healthy, and don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!